what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create some really deep modulation effects using the Scripter plugin, any instrument of your choice and any effects of your choice. So essentially what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to alter the Scripter plugin so that you can control 10 or more effects with a single continuous controller. So here I'm using the modulation wheel, but this will work for faders, for knobs, for any CC. And this is also my favorite way to save CCs to my unique synth patches and instrument patches. Because if you do it the old way with the controller assignments dialog, you know, when you click learn mode and like you click on a parameter to learn it, you can still, you know, learn more than one parameter in here per CC. But once you delete that CC, you've got to go back and relearn them all over again. And so what I want is to be able to pull up the patch and instantly recall all of that built-in modulation that I had programmed uh, prior. Okay, so right now this is just the studio piano. I'm using the Studio Grand patch. Let's add the scripter. And in the scripter, we're gonna choose a preset. And the preset we're gonna choose is called MIDI to plugin parameters. Now, what MIDI to plugin parameters allows you to do is you can take any continuous controller, right now it's assigned to the modulation wheel, and you can map that to up to four different controls. These can be plugin parameters within an instrument, they can be effects plugin parameters, and they can also be MIDI effects parameters. Just about any control can be mapped. The thing is though, I want more than four targets. I want 10 targets. So to change that, you can either start right here, or if this is already closed out, you just click open script in editor. And we're just gonna slightly change the code right here where it says total targets, four, change that to 10, and then click run script. And now we have 10 different modulation targets uh, that we can map the modulation wheel to. Now, if you don't wanna use modulation wheel, you can use a knob or a fader. Just click right here where it says learn MIDI input, move that knob or that fader. So that's uh, CC74, let's turn a knob, that's CC21. So you can certainly do things that way if you prefer, but I'm gonna go back to the modulation wheel. The very first thing I wanna map is just a sound control within Studio Piano and it's the stereo mic B. In the up position, it's a little more, it's got a little more warmth to it and that's that's what I want. Um, so let's learn plugin parameter for target one, click on that plugin parameter, and now you can see we've learned it. And I, again, I feel like using the scripter for this is way faster than using the controller assignments dialog. Now the thing is right now, when I push the mod wheel up, this slider is going up, pull it down, it's going down. I want it to be the opposite. And I also want to create a range somewhere in the middle. Um, so what you can do is you can flip your minimum and maximum, and that'll flip the motion and then you can dial back your minimum and maximum to create a range. So in the up position, I have almost none of that mic in. And then the down position. Very subtle change, but um, it's, it's enough to give us a little bit of a thicker, warmer tone in the down position. In fact, I'm gonna pull that up even a little bit more. Yeah, it's a little more bright in the up position now. Okay, so the next thing I wanna bring up is the stereo delay. Let's go ahead and make sure that is actually activated. And I wanna control the output mix left and right along with the feedback left and right. So I'm gonna to go to target two here, learn plugin parameter, click on left output mix. Let's go to target three, learn the right output mix. Target four, feedback of the left channel, and then the feedback of the right channel. And now all four of those controls in stereo delay along with the slider in studio piano are all being controlled simultaneously. 
Obviously, I don't want this much delay in feedback. It's kind of a cool effect, but when your feedback is at 100%, it's just going to keep going forever. It's not going to stop. Um, and also, with the output mix at 100%, that's going to give us like no dry signal. So I do want a little bit of wet signal in there. So let's pull these back quite a bit. I'm going to set the uh, left and right delay mix to like 45%. And I'll set the feedback to an even lower value, maybe like 30, 30 ish. So next up, let's add in some reverb. I'm going to use Realm from Native Instruments. Um, this will work with most third-party plugins and third-party instruments, and it doesn't have you know it doesn't have to be piano. It could be a synthesizer. Um, one quick thing though that I forgot to mention earlier: if your instrument already has modulation wheel assigned to something else, you may have to go back into that instrument and undo that assignment, or just use a different CC other than modulation wheel. The studio piano doesn't use modulation wheel for anything. Okay, so for this plugin, I want to map the mix, which is going to be the amount of reverb we hear, and then the modulation for a little bit of a chorus. So we don't want the uh, reverb mix to be 100%, so let's pull that back a little bit. I always want a little bit of reverb in there, so I'll pull up the minimum. Let's put the max at like 60-ish. And then for the modulation, I want very little, like maybe 20%. Okay, and our last effect plugin is the note repeater. Now, note repeater is essentially a MIDI delay. Uh, it allows you to add repeats. And you can also transpose those repeats. So the two parameters that I want to learn here are the delay time and the number of repeats. Uh, so let's go ahead and map those. So target eight will be the delay. Target nine will be the repeats. Obviously, I don't want a delay that long, and I don't want 99 repeats. Uh, so let's set the delay time to something kind of in the middle here. As I pull it up, the delay gets longer. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then for the number of repeats, I only want like three repeats. So let me pull the minimum like way up here. Oh, no, actually, the maximum needs to come down. Let's pull the maximum way down. I think at like 4%, this will give me, yeah, three repeats. So not only am I getting like MIDI delays, I'm also getting delays on top of those MIDI delays and then reverb on top of all of that. And that sort of like crystalline echo sound is coming from the fact that the delays are being transposed up one octave. So I've got the transpose knob set to 12, so that's making each uh, delay go up by 12 semitones or one octave. Now, one last thing I want to do on target 10 here is that I want to add a bit of a volume adjustment or gain adjustment. Right now in the up position... It's a little quieter, and I think that's that's for because of a number of things. Um, but what I'm going to do is on target 10, I'm going to learn the main volume. Obviously, I don't want to control it like this. Uh, really, what I want to do is have the down position be zero and then have like the up position be like three or four. So let's set the minimum to like 91. That will actually set the down position to zero. And right now we're adding 6 dB. Let's scale that back to like, yeah, 4 dB, 97%. So here is without. Just 
Just a normal piano with a little bit of ambience on it. And then with... And you know what I just realized? The feedback here is still going up to 100%. Let's go to left feedback. Let's set that to like 32. Now, the best part about this and the reason why I like to use this uh, as my main way to assign continuous controllers is because you can save all of this, including all of this modulation that we've routed here in the scripter as a channel strip setting or as a library preset uh, or library patch, if you want to call it that. So what I'll do is I'll go into the library, click save down here, and I've already got a patch here called Dreamy Piano 1 and 2. So let's call this one Dreamy Piano 3. And it saves that patch in the library. So now, anytime I want to recall that instrument, I can just pull up a blank uh, software instrument track and select that preset, that patch I made in the library. And all of that scripter modulation is already there baked in. And uh, it's all pre-assigned. Um, so I don't have to go back in and relearn any assignments like you'd have to do with the controller assignments window. And if you use a specific fader or knob for modulation, it'll remember that too. It, it will remember things other than the modulation wheel, which is really cool. All right, guys, so that's how you can use the Scripter plugin and how to modify this Scripter preset so you can have virtually as many targets as you want, so you can create some really deep modulation with a single control. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.